Hey guys, welcome to Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. I'm Shelly, welcome to our Off Grid Modern Homestead. And today I want to talk to you about what not to forget when you're buying seeds and planting your garden. So even though it's negative temps outside and uh, there's snow everywhere, my garden is totally covered, I still have spring fever in the middle of January. Why? Because the seed companies keep sending me these and when I go in the store, I see all these and it totally is exciting. I get as excited as a little kid in the 80s when we got the Sears catalog in the mail. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Okay, look, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, then look it up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I got to talk to you guys. We have been, uh, or I have been, sitting here going through my flower um, bucket, flower and seed, uh, flower and vegetable seed bucket, and trying to figure out what I want to put in the garden this year, where I want to put it, just kind of generally uh, kind of organizing it. I do want to expand it a little bit. I've talked about that a couple times. But, um, you know, just kind of figuring it out a little bit here and there. Uh, we have been here about six years. When we first started, there was nothing really here. There was a raised bed, but it wasn't in the right spot. And so that got all torn out. We took the dirt and put it into... I used hay bales for, or straw bales, for a garden. I planted, I put the dirt in these holes in the bales, and I planted, and it actually came out really well. And if I can find some pictures or some video of that, I'll put it in here. I wasn't, back then, I wasn't really interested in taking a lot of video and pictures of it, um, and didn't think anybody really would care. Probably they still don't. But it was really interesting to do, and it actually worked fairly well. It dried out really quick, but it worked fairly well. The next few years after that, I worked on uh, just some, there was some wood kicking around here, uh, pallets, things like that, that I could just scrounge up, and I started making uh, raised beds around the house uh, in, in a space that would work a lot better to have a garden in, which is where my garden is now. And I started with just a couple beds and then it, uh, just a ground bed for my corn and um, it worked out very well and I still have those too. Um, but I'm adding more every year, I'm growing bigger, I'm, I'm planting more, I'm planting different things and uh, it's been crazy. But the thing that I wanna talk to you about today is that I noticed when we first moved here there weren't any flower beds, there weren't any flowers to really speak of, there, there wasn't anything to draw the bees, the butterflies, the pollinators into my garden. So I had to hand pollinate with a little, I'd take either a Q-tip or a little paintbrush and I would hand pollinate. That's how a lot of my vegetables came to be because I hand pollinated. Um, I didn't have a lot of bees around. After a few years, they started coming. They're like, oh, flowers, let's go. Yeah, cool, bring my buddies. Yeah, bring them all in. But I still, last year, um, not last year, 2020, uh, was the year I had to start hand pollinating again. For some reason, they just weren't coming, even though I've been building flower beds and putting in flowers that I thought they would be interested in, which they were, um, but for some reason they weren't getting to the garden. And in my mind, I wasn't thinking I needed flowers in my garden. I had a few, um, but I wasn't planting a lot of flowers with my garden. So I started doing some, um, companion planting, research, some pollinator research, things that would bring in asking questions, asking people like you guys, what do you guys do for your gardens to bring in those pollinators? Because as you know, they're very important. A lot of people were saying, I put, I plant nasturtiums because they're actually a good companion plant and they bring in the bees, butterflies, ants, ants are pollinators, things like that. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Then somebody said, 
plant some marigolds. Those are also good for companion plants and pollinators. They all, it all likes it. So I'm like, awesome. So last year I decided I was going to start planting flowers in my garden in and around my plants. Guess what? It worked. I had more bees, more butterflies. I've taken more pictures of beautiful flowers with beautiful bees and butterflies, bumblebees, honeybees, carpenter bees, I don't know, all, all kinds of bees and hornets too, everything, um, and all different kinds of butterflies. I just, I've never seen so many butterflies. And it just, they brought all the flowers, brought the pollinators to the yard, and I'm so excited about it. Um, it was just an awesome thing. I also didn't have to hand pollinate at all last year. So uh, I wanted to tell you, don't forget one thing. Don't forget your pollinators. Don't forget your flowers. Put those in your garden amongst your vegetables. It really, really helps, guys. It really does. It's awesome. So guess what? This year, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do more and maybe not in the garden so much because I want more vegetables in there. I am going to have some flowers in and around placed here and there, um, but up and around and around the chicken coop and things like that. I'm going to grow more flowers from seed. I wanted to show you guys my seed haul. Small, but it was a great deal. I went in, they had all these burpee seeds for 40% off. So a lot of these are uh, 279, 329, 419, uh, and I got them for 40% off. So it was really cool. The lady behind me at the register, she's like, Oh, does somebody have spring fever and want to plant a garden? Uh, yeah, every year, every stinking year at this time. I'm always like, When? When? Let's go. Spring, let's go. It's the middle of January, guys. Not even, really. But anyway, <laughs> that's just how I am. I get excited. I'm not the only one. I know it. I'm not the only one. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you what I got. I got a couple different carrot ones. I got uh, half long carrots and Danvers carrots. I think Danvers I did last year. Those were good. They weren't all super long, but I did plant them really close together. Um, I planted them the way I shouldn't have done it, but I actually got a lot out of it and I put a lot of them in my, my soups and stews that I had. So uh, we actually ended up with quite a few carrots which, and they were good. They were really good. So I got these two, two cucumbers. I got um, Burpless Beauty and Garden Sweet. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I did either one of these last year. I do a lot of Baker Creek. I do whatever I find. I do Baker Creek, Mary's Heirloom Seeds, Burpee, you know, all these. Uh, jalapeno Early Hot Peppers. I thought I'd try those. They're 72 to 75. My hot peppers took a long time, which they do. Um, they took all summer long. And by the end of the summer, when I was ready to pull my plants out, they just started fruiting. So. I thought maybe I'd get these early ones and see if maybe I could get them and see what they taste like if they're any good. So I got those. I got sweet corn, Sunny Days Hybrid. I also have some early corn left over from last year. I don't know, other stuff. But anyway, I got that. Summer squash zucchini. Got that. Always have to have my zucchini so I can have my zucchini frittata. I love those. Tomato, medium rare hybrid, new for 2022. So I thought I'd get those new. Why not? And to add this year, I got Firecatcher Sunflowers, my birds, squirrels, chipmunks, bees, uh, butterflies, all love my sunflowers. So I try to make sure I do quite a few sunflowers. Even the chickens like the sunflowers because I love the seeds. And then I got Citrus Sunflower. It looks almost like those, um, the bear, the, the bear ones there. It's kind of uh, uh, bushy instead of uniformed. So anyway, that's pretty cool. But I do have this whole thing and they were all organized, but I started going through them and trying to figure out what I have. But I have a bunch of King in the North, Bull, Bullnose, um, 
grew those last year. Got some fairly good peppers off that. I got sweet pepper, burpee uh, ones. I got uh, Craig's Grande Jalapeno peppers. Those are the ones that took so long last year. Don't forget your flowers. Don't forget your pollinators. They're going to help you. Your ladybugs, they're going to help you. Your worms in your garden, they're going to help you. So don't forget because it's coming soon to a backyard, front yard, side yard, somewhere near you. There is going to be a garden and warm weather. Mm, I can't wait. All right. That's it, guys. That's my crazy rant because I'm so excited about gardening. So if you're interested in companion planting, I did a video last year on a bunch of different flowers and herbs that are great for your garden for companion planting. So if you'd like to look at that video, it's going to be linked right over here. Thanks for watching. See ya. Hey guys, welcome to Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. I'm Shelly and I'm here to talk to you about what not to forget when you're planting your garden. Or Hey guys, I'm Shelly from Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. Welcome to our off grid home and uh, kitchen and uh, whatever. <laughs> hey, did you make it to the end? Well, guess what? Then you can enter our giveaway. I want to give away a $15 gift card to Mary's Heirloom Seeds. So you can buy seeds, dirt, planting mix, whatever you want. And all you gotta do is put hashtag off grid, all one word, down in the comments when you make a comment. Alright? So shh, don't tell. Alright, bye.